Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to this tutorial. It's Khazu here with you. And this tutorial basically is a follow-up tutorial on Atta Al-Bahani's tutorial. He has this great tutorial uh, when uh, he basically talks about using X-Particle to create these abstract looks inside Cinema 4D. Uh, you know, it's a really great tutorial, but uh, I think, uh, you know, we can do the same thing using Cinema 4D native tools. Now, definitely X-Particle is a worthy plugin. It's a very, very amazing and powerful tool. Uh, but uh, we can do uh, something quite similar using Cinema 4D native tools, and hopefully you're going to love this tutorial. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Now, we're inside Cinema 4D. Uh, the first thing I want to create a cube here. Let's go ahead and change the uh, X size to 0.5, Z size to 0.5, the Y size to something like 50 centimeter. I'm going to hit C and let's go ahead and grab all the, uh, see, grab your rectangular selection and make sure you have tolerance selection enabled and only select visible elements turn up. Select this. Uh, polys hit U and I to invert the selection and delete. Now we're getting rid of this bottom poly, so we don't need that. Now uh, I'm gonna go ahead and create a cloner based off that. Uh, you know, MoGraph, hold down Alt and click on a cloner. And let's go ahead and change the mode to grid array. Now I'm gonna go ahead and now the more the merrier, as they say, but uh, you really have to. Uh, think about your uh, machine, uh, whether it can handle it, either it can handle it or not. But generally speaking, uh, the more the better. So let me go uh, for about 200 uh, to 200. Now hopefully, uh, because I'm recording right, right now, it might be a bit hard to handle. Uh, but let's go ahead and I'm gonna type in 160 here too. So the clones should be very, very close together right now. Let's take a look. You can see, uh, let's see. You can see, you know, they're definitely very uh, close together. Now, this is the first part. Let me go ahead and just uh, make sure my level of detail is set to uh, medium. So we can just work a bit easier here. I'm going to hit NB. So this is what we have right now. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead because uh, it's hard. I'm recording and having a few programs going on background. So let's go ahead to low and that will make our viewport so snappy. Now the next thing is uh, to go ahead and uh, I'm gonna uh, start creating uh, a material here. Now uh, you should definitely watch uh, Atta's tutorial because he I tell you, uh, you know, where to get some of these nice textures, nice colorful textures, and let me go ahead. I'm gonna just go ahead and use Luminance Channel, even though it really doesn't matter which channel do you use. But I'm gonna be using, I don't know. Let's go ahead and use. I have downloaded a few of this, uh, and I think let's go ahead and use this one. Let's see how that's gonna work out for us. Okay, I'm going to just uh, convert this to a black and white texture. So let's go ahead and apply a filter there. Go inside your filter, saturation negative 100. And if you uh, open this picture here, you should be able to see how exactly it works. I don't know, it might be better to use another texture, but we will see how that's going to work and how that's going to affect our design here. So I'm going to uh, let's uh, leave it like this for the moment and see, I don't know, maybe it would be better if we have this lightness a bit. Okay, let's go ahead and call it that day and let's go ahead and apply the shader effector. MoGraph effector and there we go. Here is our shader effector. And the shader effector, let's go ahead, the parameters. We don't want scale, we want the position. Let's go to something like maybe 25 for the moment and we'll see how it's gonna work. Go to the shading tab and let's go ahead and apply this texture to here and in the shader effector make sure you are in the shading tab and now you can use a custom texture or you can just uh, set this to luminance and as you can see you can uh, definitely and quickly see the result but it's not really uh, you can see how uh, they are just uh, really organized and that's definitely not what this texture should uh, basically does to our uh, clones uh, where the uh, texture is brighter those clones should be 
uh, getting higher and vice versa for the black or uh, darker pixels or uh, let's go ahead and I'm going to select this, this texture go ahead and enable your texture tag uh, change this to uh, flat and let's go ahead I'm going to grab my rotation tool and hold down shift and rotate it basically 90 degrees and if you go to here you can see it's not really exact and we can basically if we want uh, go ahead and uh, make this texture to perfectly match uh, our clones and uh, let's see what we got here right now now there we go now we can't see it exactly because we are in this uh, basically love level of detail if I go ahead and change my level of detail to high and hopefully it's gonna get updated Sorry, it should be working better, but I'm recording right now, so that's why it's so uh, crazy right now. So as you can see, we have all of those uh, detail and uh, uh, raising and uh, basically whatever this texture has to represent. Now, uh, to get the color, the way I uh, do it is simply let's go ahead and duplicate this shader vector. Make sure it has been applied to your uh, cloner. There we go go to this shader I'm gonna create another material and uh, let's go ahead and use color channel and again you can use really whatever channel you want I'm gonna be using the same texture and if I check out the tag you can see it's exactly like that there we go and let's apply this texture to our shader and make sure your uh, parameter is turned up there we go and let's see what we have here let me change my level of detail again back to law okay there we go now let's see what we have here do you see those Clones effector. Let's put this shader before this one. I think what we can do is go to this first and ch make sure that it hasn't. It's not gonna affect our color channel. So let's see. Now it should work. And let's see what we have done wrong. The shading. Make sure it's color. There we go. And. As you can see, every clone has its own specific, unique color, and that's what makes thing make this thing very, very nice. Now, the next thing, let's go ahead and create a plane there, and let's me uh, go ahead. Uh, let's see where we are right now. There we go. A bit bigger. I'm gonna go to one of the side views and move this plane a bit higher now okay let's go ahead and enable our hopefully it's gonna get updated now there we go but definitely not too bad what we have right now now you might think that uh, it would be better to go ahead and enable this render instances but uh, enabling this will possibly uh, kind of create sort of problems for your shader effectors and if you go ahead hopefully it won't but it is a huge possibility that it will uh, kind of cause some problem while rendering uh, even though having you can see uh, right now in the viewport you can't see the uh, effect of this uh, sh second shader effector so that's why I uh, uh, don't uh, check this parameter and waiting for update I'm gonna go ahead and select my plane and trying to move it a bit higher maybe something like that now it's time to setting up a camera let's go ahead and quickly set up a camera I'm gonna it's really hard to work with uh, 
about 40,000 clones and having uh, a lot of programs going on there. But I'm just trying to go ahead and do it quickly and see where we are and what we can do. There we go. Let's go ahead and... Okay, let's see. Make sure you are inside the camera. And I actually went ahead and changed the focal lines to something like 75, I think. But it's definitely up to you. I don't want a lot of perspective here. And as I said, it's up to you. It doesn't have to be this or that. And maybe actually having a, lot, a bit of perspective would be nice. Let's go ahead and change this to 50. And I just go ahead and rotate the camera a bit or however you are feeling it. And the next thing is go ahead and change this back to high. And we're waiting to see the update here. There we go. Now, as you can see, you got all of these details here. Now, uh, uh, if you go ahead and render this, it's going to take possibly forever. My render, I think it took uh, more than one hour. Uh, so what you can do right now is uh, to make sure these materials are going to be appropriate and have reflection. You're going to have to go ahead and create a new material. And this material, in the color channel, you go ahead and use the uh, color shader. And in the reflection, you go ahead and make it reflective. So I'm going to use Fresnel. By the way, I can't wait to see the reflectance channel in new Cinema 40 or 16. That's going to be so amazing. And so, uh, you know, it, it's, it's going to be a game changer, really. So let's go ahead and uh, do that. I'm going to just go ahead and possibly do something like this and add a lot of uh, blurriness. And now the reason we added this color shader, shader now we uh, go ahead and apply this material to our cloner really simply. The reason we added this color shader is basically uh, we say to our material that instead of using this color channel here, go ahead and use this shader, this shader effectors or whatever uh, MoGraph basically material based uh, uh, kind of texture. Uh, use it in your color channel and for the reflection use this uh, wall use that we uh, give you basically now you uh, go ahead and apply this to your uh, cloner and uh, create a quick material for uh, the uh, uh, basically the floor I'm gonna go ahead apply a lot of reflection again and definitely again using the Fresnel but uh, let's go ahead some 35 and I definitely don't want to be much specular you can go ahead and actually enable uh, this silver option and I think that's definitely is not too bad and uh, you are basically and uh, I recommend that you use a physical renderer uh, because there is a lot of glossiness going on and you have so many things here and uh, just go ahead, enable, uh, change your size. I rendered HD. And I'm just trying to uh, finish this tutorial as quick as possible because we really don't have time to go over all of this stuff. So let's uh, go ahead uh, for the physical. You uh, can go ahead and actually add a bit more uh, blurriness subdivision because uh, there is a lot of uh, stuff going on here. So we have to make sure that our physical render is able to render our uh, scene uh, correctly. And also I added the global illumination and uh, as always light mapping and uh, you know some basic stuff that we have talked about in uh, a lot of tutorials. So you don't need to uh, you don't need me to go over all of this stuff again. So there we go. You just go ahead uh, and uh, uh, render your uh, scene and you hopefully uh, you are going to get something like uh, this. There we go. As you can see, it's amazing, very nice and powerful. Uh, and about depth of field, I actually uh, cheated a bit and uh, I added this uh, blurriness uh, inside Photoshop. 
uh, and that's going to be a bit easier. Uh, so that's uh, up to you. But if you want to enable physical, enable lips of fill, it's up to you. But uh, for this case, because it was much more easier to use Photoshop or if you want After Effects to go ahead and add this blurriness stuff. Uh, and that's about it. And hopefully you will hit render and you're going to get uh, something uh, very kind of similar and nice. And by the way, you don't have to basically use the same textures for both the uh, color and the luminance. You know, uh, what I did actually in my uh, uh, original, in my the design I show you here, I used, uh, uh, I think it was this texture that I used uh, to uh, having the uh, go ahead and change this back to one and my lightness to zero. I added, I think, uh, contrast here. Makes me contrast and I use this one. You can see now we have totally different uh, sort of uh, height map and that will help to break uh, the uh, whole uh, thing so you don't have to use the same texture but definitely it'll be better and have uh, it's gonna have more harmony if you use the same texture for both uh, luminance and color channel uh, guys before I wrap up the tutorial there is one uh, important thing that I forgot I uh, opened up the original scene that I finally uh, you know rendered it uh, you know if you go to your shader effector in order to get these colors to be so vivid uh, let me just there is this option called use alpha strength if you enable it you can see the colors are going to get so uh, weak and the contrast is going to go down but um, make sure to uncheck this parameter here and this way you're going to get the uh, colors from your textures and they're going to be vivid and nice while you render so i hope you enjoyed this tutorial and uh, i uh, thank uh, atal behani for his great tutorial and definitely go there and check his tutorial out and by the way if you want to have uh, kind of uh, see more of these advanced tips and tricks for uh, MoGraph uh, shader, uh, Factor, and other uh, MoGraph tools. Go ahead and check out this Creating a 3D Motion Graphics the Gift project. Uh, this is a premium tutorial for and go ahead and check it out on Udemy. It's a really great tutorial uh, and uh, we talk more advanced stuff and also this uh, other Creating a 3D Motion Graphics the Box Studio project. Go and check them both and hopefully you're gonna love them so thank you for watching uh, and by the way i will be creating more of this premium uh, advanced 3d motion graphics tutorial so if you see if you see something very nice and powerful uh, from a whatever uh, you know studio and uh, you are sure that it could be possibly done with one person just uh, come and drop a comment or send me a private message and uh, i'll be willing to create a kind of premium tutorials about those stuff too so thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.